Now, what we'll do today is we'll work with this uh, image here, and we will try and create this. This doesn't exist. Some of it doesn't exist. And I'll show you what this looked like in the first place. This was the original version. In fact, this was the original version. Then we'll go ahead and turn it into this. Okay. We'll add the ears. We'll extend the background. Then after this, we'll take this photograph and we'll put it into After Effects and we'll make this horse look from that side towards us a little bit. Interesting stuff. Freaky, I know. So I'm going to get rid of this. So let's first bring our friend in. This is a quick uh, shortcut if you didn't know about this. If you want to bring an image into Photoshop while you're inside Photoshop, rather than using your keyboard shortcut, which is Command O, or if you don't want to go to File, Open, or don't want to use Bridge, what you can do is if you've seen this application frame, which you would if you on a Mac go to Window and check this application frame uh, box, then this would appear. Otherwise, it would just appear like this see through uh, application. If you just click anywhere empty in the background here, that will open up your open dialog box. That's a really handy keyboard shortcut, well, mouse shortcut if you like. And this is the image that we want to bring in. It doesn't work, of course, if you have a, an open image already, so you have to have nothing open, then you can double click in the background and it works. Now, first thing that we'll do is extend this canvas, okay, without before we add anything to it. There are a couple of ways of doing this. You can go to image canvas size, or of course you can use the keyboard shortcut, Alt Command C to bring up your canvas size. The easy way I like to do this is by using the crop tool. So we use the crop tool the other way around. So when I say normal crop, you may be thinking, well, crop cuts bits of the image. Now you can use it uh, to extend your canvas as well. And this is how it works. And I'm going to turn this on. And this is how that works. You get your crop tool, see on the keyboard, or from the toolbar, just click on the crop tool here. Okay. Then you create a selection, a crop area around the entirety of this image. So you can start from any of the corners outside the image. So you don't want to start like this. Uh, this would work as well, actually, but uh, to keep things uh, in proportion, I'll start from the very outside, top left here. Click and drag an area. Now I have my crop box. And to extend this, I'll just hold down Command um, minus to zoom out a little bit. Now, to extend this canvas, I'll hold down Shift to keep things in proportion. Move up to the top left, click, and drag this outside. Okay, I'll go a little bit more, maybe, just so that we have more room to work with. Something like that. Then if I hit Return, or accept this, now it extends the canvas size. Okay. You can't do this just by using Crop Tool 1, so you can't just click and drag outside that canvas, it will limit it there. And as soon as you let go, then you can click and drag it outside and it will reveal the background color, whatever that color happens to be. That's the first step. Now, the easy part here is the left hand side. This area doesn't really have anything in here, so I can just uh, quite quickly and easily extend this part to fill up the left hand side. So, let's deal with the easy part first. Okay. And okay, the ways I'm showing you this, if you say, oh, I can do it that way as well, that probably would be correct. The good thing about Photoshop is that you can do one action, but you can do one thing in maybe at least five different ways. And the bad thing about Photoshop is that you can do the same thing in about five different ways. So if you ever think, oh, I would do it that way, that would be right. But I'll tell you the way I do it, and I'll t also tell you why I think those are quicker and safer. I'll try and work as non-destructively as possible. So, to extend this area, what I'm going to do is get my marquee selection tool and on the keyboard, or this little guy here on the left in the toolbar. Now I'm going to create a selection roughly around here. Okay. Now, I can put this up on a separate layer by holding down Command-J so that I don't destruct the original image, I work with the uh, copied layer. But I'll just go ahead and make a transform on this without copying it on a different layer, because I know that I don't need to, I won't need to use this area again. I can hold down Command T 
to bring up my free transform around this. But in many cases, I find uh, content array scale works better than free transform. Um, in this case, it won't matter that much because we don't really have any characteristics here, so we can't really distort much. We just want to extend this a little bit. But if you had, uh, say, I don't know, a person in the background or what have you, if you use the content array scale as opposed to free transform, it works a lot better and it doesn't distort as much. And you can get to content array scale by holding down all your modifier, key modifier keys, so Shift, Alt, Command, and C. Or you can go to, of course, Edit, Content Array Scale. It will put the same transform box around that selection. Then I can click on this end, drag it to the left. That's step one. Then to accept this, I'll hit Return. Then to deselect, Command D. Okay, doesn't look too bad. Just extended the left hand side quite easily. We didn't have to do any cloning, no healing. Just grabbed an area, just extended it to the left to um, increase those pixels. It worked quite fine. If you had, like I said, things that you didn't want to distort, you would probably want to create a selection around them and maybe subtract that selection from what you're doing here so that it doesn't distort them. So again, that was the easy part. I'll now need to fill in these parts. What I'll do first is fill these parts with as much green and you know, these different shades here as possible. Then I'll go ahead and find some ears and add them there. Now, this is a tricky one because there isn't really an area, a clean area, a clear area that I can use to copy uh, the information from. So what I'll have to do, if I want to get my clone stamp tool, you know, hold down old and clone it here. This would take a little long. Plus, you'd start seeing all these repeating patterns, which would be a big giveaway. So you don't want that. What I'll do instead is I'll create a selection around the area where I think would be you know, the biggest, the largest area, and the cleanest area, which seems like this part here to me now. So I'll zoom into that part and see if I can do that. To zoom in, uh, you can hold down Command, Spacebar, click and drag to the right. It's an easier way to zoom in on the keyboard. Or, of course, you can use the Zoom key here, Zoom tool here. Now, I'll just create a rough selection around this. I'll get my polygonal raster tool by hitting L on the keyboard and Shift L until I get to that tool here. Or you can hold down your mouse button here and choose polygonal lasso tool. Then I'll create a rough selection without going to the edges because I'll need to feather this out in a second. So I'll create a selection like so. You probably need to go ahead and adjust this uh, later on, but you see how that's done. And of course, if I just was to move this around, you see a really hard edge, which is not what we want. To make things as seamless as possible. So with this uh, selection still active, with one of my selection tools still active, I'll go up here to the options bar and click on Refine Edge. I'll just move this out the way. Then I'll add some feather to this. Feathering will smooth out the edges of the selection here, so we'll blend it in together with the background. So feather, and I'll just drag this to the right. A little bit more. If I do too much, you'll start seeing the edges that I didn't want. So I'll just go back, maybe something like this. And let's see if I can get out a little bit more by using the shift edge, edge option here. Just stop as soon as I see that corner there. That seems to be just fine. Then I'm going to hit OK. Now I have a selection there. If I was to move this selection, you see that's a lot uh, softer. Doesn't do any good yet, but it'll get better. Now, to work non destructively so we don't actually mess up our original image, we can go back to it whenever we want to. I'm going to put this selection onto, on, onto its own layer. And that can be done by, if you have the selection active, by holding down Command J. Command J, of course, you can go to Layer, New, Layer Wire Copy. That will do it as well. But Command J is the quickest way of doing it. Now, I have that part on its separate layer. So I'll zoom out. I'll get my move tool, V on the keyboard. I'll click on this area and just drag this to the right. Now, at this point, you may be thinking, what are you doing? Well, we'll fill all this area in with this green, this part with this green. Then we'll fill the rest with maybe this part or this part. And we'll kind of mix them together using a mask and maybe a little bit of eraser as well. So you're going to have to bear with me. It looks a little bit stupid to start with, 
But as soon as we're done, it'll look great, hopefully. So what I'm going to do is first make sure that this little guy here fills up the whole screen. If you want to have more space, more room to work with, you can always hit F, and that will toggle between your uh, screen modes. So now I'm in the full screen mode. You can hit V again. And I'm just making sure that I don't leave any white areas like this around there. So I'll just patch this one here. And with this uh, layer still active, so F again to come out from this, I'm going to hold down Command J again, and that will duplicate that layer. So it will create a new layer based on the selected layer. I'll click on V to get my move tool, and I'll move this to the right like so. This is a lot easier and it looks a lot better than cloning because if I was to clone this area I would need to uh, you know click alt get a source point draw let go click again and then you'll end up with uh, repeating patterns which is exactly what you what you don't want when you're using a technique like this now I have two of these next to each other now I have a larger selection what I'm going to do is I'm going to merge these down together so they become one layer so I can copy these two and that saves me from copying it four times. To merge the layer down to the below layer, you select the layer and hold down Command E. That merges the layer down a level. Now both of these layers became a single layer. Right. Then I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this layer, Command J, and I'll just drag this down. I have a little repeating pattern here, but I'll deal with this in a second. And perhaps I can do this one more time. Command J, just drag it down. I'm going to merge all these three together. So I'm going to select all of them. Click on the first one. Shift click on the last one. Command E to merge them down. Then I'm going to hold down Command J again and bring them to here. At this point, I can actually let's go ahead and merge these down as well. I'll click and merge these down too. At this point, I want to repeat, uh, I want to use a different um, pattern, if you like, a different texture, which is and in this part a little bit darker. I, of course, don't want to have exactly the same thing repeating for the rest of this. So I'm going to go ahead to my background layer, get my selection tool. You can either use this area or this area, completely up to you. I'll probably go with this one because it's a bit larger, it'll make things a little bit quicker. I'll just create a selection, refine edge. Again, I'll add some feather to this. And let's see how far I can push this with the shift edge. Somewhere there, that's fine. It's okay. And I'll create a new layer based on this, making sure that this layer is still active, holding now Command J. And now I have a new layer there. I'll grab this up. I'll duplicate this one, Command J again. Bring this down. Then I'll go ahead and merge these down together. Select them both. Command E. Command J to duplicate them. Move it to the right. Command J again. Move it to the right a little bit more. Okay. And then I'll merge these down as well. Select them all. Command E. I'll go to this layer here. The first layer. The very green one. Get my eraser tool. E on the keyboard. Or you can click on the eraser here. And I'll get a soft and a large eraser. You can change the size of your brush eraser by either right-clicking anywhere on the image panel here. You can change it here. Or you can use the left and right bracket keys, the keys to the right of P. That changes the size as well. Or easier yet, on a Mac, you can hold down Control, Alt, and click and drag to the right. That makes that brush larger. Click and drag it to the left. That makes that brush smaller. If you drag it up, that makes that brush softer drag it down, that makes it harder. So, Control, Alt, click and drag on a Mac. On the PC, this is um, Alt, Shift and right click and drag. Okay, with the eraser tool set to something soft and large, I'll make sure that this layer is still selected and I'll just delete, I'll just change my opacity from 20 to 100 as well. I can do it from here or hit zero on the keyboard I'll just delete part of this. I'll get a larger brush. Oh, I'm starting to see the background there. So I'll get it too much. Something like this. It gets better. Now, I'm going to merge these two down together. Select them two together. Command E. 
Then what I'll do to even out to, to even out the oh that is spitting water on me. Oh well. To even out this color difference from here, I'll duplicate this layer that we created. Command J to duplicate it. I'll get my free transform tool. Command T. Move tool and I'll rotate this around. All around the shift key will lock it to uh, move in perfect increments, so 45 degree increments. Now hit return to accept this. Now I can either bring the opacity of this uh, upper layer down to merge those two, to get two together. So we have the brighter one on top here, which is mixing with the darker one at the bottom. Or you have the darker one on top here, which is mixing with the brighter one at the bottom. So we'll get an even uh, look there. So I won't spend too much more time on this. Of course, you can uh, you know, make this look a little bit better uh, if you did spend some time on this. And after that, I'm going to go ahead and merge these two together. All that work just to create this. Okay. Now, let's go ahead and borrow a pair of ears from a different horse. It will come down. Now. now, if I hold down Command O to open up uh, the open window, now you, you may be surprised with this. This is a completely different horse, completely different ears, but I'll still be able to use this in this other image. Okay. To do that, of course, I have to select the ear first, so I'll zoom in, command spacebar, click and drag, and you see it's a lot noisier as well, but we'll get away with that. I'll get my quick, uh, my quick selection tool, W on the keyboard, or this little tool here, and I, I'll use this ear here. Get a smaller brush, I'll just select this ear. To make this area a little bit nicer, the selection a bit nicer, I'm going to hit L and shift L until I get my lasso tool. And I'll subtract this area from that selection. So hold down Alt. Let's create a better selection like that. And I'm not going to do any refine edges. I'll just show you what this looks like, the selection looks like. It looks like this. Actually, let's go ahead and make this a little bit softer here. Then we'll see how we can make it better in the other window. So I'll add a little bit feather here. So you see what that does. It just softens that out. I'll just add, add a little bit. And also smoothen this a little bit as well. So the hard edges here, if I have any like, jagged edge edges here, they will, uh, they will have those curves on them, so it looks smoother. So click on the smooth option. Of course, if I go too much, you'll uh, start losing all those edges. That seems to have done the trick, and I'll hit OK. Then you can move this uh, ear to the other document in a million different ways. I'll just get my move tool, click on this ear, drag it on top of this name of the uh, document, that will open up that document, bring, and let go down. Okay, it brings that up as a new layer, and you see it's a, uh, a lot smaller than the original one. For now, to mesh things up, I'm going to get rid of this layer, so I'm just going to hide this layer here, so I can match the ears up here, and I'm going to hold down Command T to get my free transform, zoom in here a little bit, and I'll just try and align this ear with the other one. Thing may look even better if it's the other way around. No, I just change my mind. I'll do it this way. Make it slightly larger. Change it around. I'm just doing a really quick uh, job here, just trying to match it with the other one. Of course, you're using some. Uh, you're losing some um, quality here because of the resizing. But that was the best other horse image I had, so we had to leave it at now. Okay, I think I'll leave it somewhere here. Does it look convincing? No, it doesn't. We'll make it look convincing in a second. So I'll hit return to accept that. And you can just use your arrow keys to nudge this around by a couple of pixels. Now I'm going to put a mask around this uh, area there so that we and um, fade this together with the background. So with this layer selected, I can go ahead, actually I'll use the ear on the other side as well, so I, it's going to be quicker. I'm going to duplicate this ear, Command J, go to the other side, and Command T to get my free transform, just rotate it around, to have it on this ear as well. Now, what, what I'm doing here is quite extreme. You wouldn't necessarily, you know, no one would ask you to replace someone's ear or a horse's ear, but I'm just showing you what can be done. Okay. 
put this one here. Now I'm going to add some masks to this. Masks to this. And let's start with the first one, layer one. And I'm going to go ahead and open up the mask panel. And click on this pixel mask option. You add a mask to my layer. What I can use this for is to delete part of this, or rather hide part of this layer, without actually distracting the layer. So I'm going to get my brush tool, be on the keyboard, make sure it's a soft one, and large one. And I'll turn that into black, so I want to uh, paint it black, so I hide that area. X will swap the foreground color with the background color. Then I'll click and start painting on this area. Now, you can't really see much happening, because my opacity is set to 30%. So I'll take it back to 100. And I'll click and start painting with this. I'll get a larger brush. It looks more convincing. There's little work to be done in this area, but we'll fix that in a second. Now, this is more or less done. I'm going to do the same for the other ear. Click on this layer. Create a mask. You can also create a mask, layer mask from here as well. It's the same button. Then I'll go ahead and do the same for this ear. I'm just kind of hiding part of this ear. Of course, the colors don't match yet, but we'll make that uh, match as well. In fact, uh, do you mind turning the light off there for us? Uh, it's the bottom to the left of that digital screen, and the last one, the red one. Oh, perfect, thanks. You see it's a little bit better now, the colors uh, aren't matching properly. Okay. And... Okay, so I'll reveal this other layer here, which looks... Ridiculous now. And I'm going to zoom out. And I'm going to make this layer a little bit larger so I can mask that out a little bit better as well. So with this layer selected, Command T, Free Transform, just make it larger like this. Reason for this is when we start masking this layer out, we don't see any of those uh, edges here. So I'll add, I'll add the mask to this layer as well. And I'll paint the areas in with black. The bits where I want to hide, I'll paint them in with black using my brush tool, smaller brush maybe. Just paint those areas in. I mean, I'm not bothering with any selections here. This would look a little bit better, a lot better probably, if you were actually creating a selection around the edge of the horse here. Um, but that would take some time, so I'm trying to keep things a little bit quick. So I'm just going to go with this. Okay. And just to see what this is looking like, I'm going to bring down the opacity. I can still get rid of some of the parts here. Okay, and I'll bring the opacity back up. Still doesn't look perfect, but we're getting there. This nasty edge of the ear here is caused by the feathering bit that we added. So we're going to go ahead and get rid of that as well. I could have used less feather, or I can still use the refine edge option. But I actually like to do, to, do, to do this manually, because using the refine edge option, this one here, if I have a selection, if I say I want to contract the mask by two pixels, it does it from every single side. But if I do it manually using a mask, a pixel mask, I can actually tell Photoshop what to do. Uh, I can control Photoshop rather than asking it to do, you know, do that operation for me. So, with this mask still selected on the left ear, I'll get my brush tool. Get a smaller brush. I want to delete part of this, so I'll probably make this a little bit harder as well. Just go around this to get rid of that uh, nasty edge. Can you see the difference there? So this was before. It's ever so slightly. We'll fix this in a second here. This is before, this is after. I'm doing this manually here. If you use a harder brush, you'll have a better definition there. Oops. So I'm just going around this without actually touching the black areas there. And I'm not deleting anything. I'm just putting a mask around this. And I didn't want to um, you know, bring up a version like in Blue Peter and say, here's one I did earlier. I actually wanted to show you how long it normally takes for someone to do this and you know, what kind of problems that you, might, you may come across with. Because the other one is the easy way. So I'll do it on this year as well. And I'll make sure that I have this mask selected. And I'll carry on painting with black. This is what I'm doing to that mask, painting it. And I'll do this for this side as well. That looks better. I think we missed a little bit here. So I'm going to go back to this one. 
get rid of some of them. You have to make sure that the mask uh, that you're dealing with is active. Otherwise, if I was to go here and paint on this one, you'll see nothing's happening here. Because that mask is not active. I still have this mask selected. Okay, I'll zoom out. Probably do a little bit better job here as well. Just want to spend more time on it. Um, to make the ears match color with the rest of the horse, I'll use an adjustment layer. Now, I'm going to apply the same adjustment layer for both of these ears. And there are a couple of different ways you can do this. You can put these two ears into a smart object, so you can merge them into a smart object and do it that way. Or you can create a group, put these ears into a group, and um, apply the adjustment layer to that group. And I'll show you that way. Now, I'll put these two, I'll select them first. Then I'll hold down Command G to group those layers. I'll call this group double click, I'll call these ears and I'll go ahead and apply an adjustment layer to this group so let's go here inside the group let's click on the utmost layer go to adjustments and I think I can use maybe a color balance adjustment here yeah, this bit here I can clone again to get rid of I'll just uh, use a color balance adjustment which is this one here now if I change the colors here you'll see that it affects everything including the horse and have you I want to uh, limit this to only these uh, these guys here. So what I'll do is I will let's make the adjustment first, and I'll show you that. I'll click on the group, and you'll see the blending mode is set to pass through. That's what happens if you create a group. If you want this layer uh, adjustment layer to affect only the layers inside the group. You change the layer mode from the blending mode from pass through to normal. This time you'll see that it only affects the stuff, the layers inside this group. It's quite a useful uh, thing to know. See now we have bleeding ears. And of course that's not the adjustment that I wanted to go for, so I'll click back on the adjustment. So what I want to do is maybe add a little bit brown to this. So to start with I'll increase red a little bit, ever so slightly. Then I'll increase yellow as well. It's looking a little bit different on that projector than it is here. So I'm going to um, Yeah, I think I can get away with that. Then maybe add a... Actually, I'll, I'll... Shadows and add a little bit of red to the shadows as well. And a little bit yellow to the shadows uh, as well. So I'll zoom out. This is without the adjustment layers. I'll zoom in actually to show you that. This is without the adjustment layers. This is with the adjustment layers. And let's go ahead while we're here and fix this little error here as well. I'll click on this layer and see if this, uh, it's a mask uh, error. Get a larger brush. Yeah, so I painted this too much with the mask here. So I painted it with black too much. That's why I have this nasty edge showing up. So I'll switch back to my uh, white brush and I'll just kind of demask it if you like. So I'll just paint it with white, meaning that I'll show again this area. So I just got rid of that part there as well. So there you have it. I won't spend time on um, getting rid of this. Uh, you can use the uh, combination of clone stamp and the healing brush and the spot healing brush to get rid of this. But I won't spend more time on that. I'll show you what this looked like before we started and the final version. Then we'll take this into After Effects. So let's get to my histories panel. This is what that was like before. And this is what we had after. Uh, in the first version I showed you, I spent a little bit more time on this area here and can probably add some mask here as well to merge it together with the background a little bit better. So let's, while you're here, let's do it as well. I'll get a smaller, a larger brush, a bit white, oh, sorry, a bit black. I'll just paint this a little bit more. So I'll get rid of that nasty edge there as well. So it was like this, then I got rid of it like this. Okay, so let's take this now into After Effects and see what we can do to this. I'm going to first uh, bring this image size down so that it's a little bit easy for After Effects to render all this. So I'm going to go to Image, Image Size, and I'll just take this down to maybe say, I don't know, 900. Just to make the file size a little bit smaller, even, even smaller than this. 600 by 900. Okay, when we take this into, into After Effects, we're going to use this effect called Displacement Map. 
And the way that effect works is it looks at the luminance values, and by that I mean the brightness values of a, of a layer. So it looks at bright, uh, whites and blacks, and it pushes blacks in one direction, and it pushes whites into the other direction. If you have grays, if you have like a perfect gray, it doesn't touch it. So if you have black and white, they go like that. So before I take this to After Effects, I'm going to create a displacement map in Photoshop. Okay. To do that, I'm going to merge these layers. Of course, I normally if I wanted to keep this as a Photoshop file. I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't merge all these layers in these groups. But now I'm just going to flatten this because we're done with the Photoshop side of it. I'm going to layer, flatten image. So I just have one, one layer here. Now to create this displacement map, I'm going to create a new layer, which I can do by going down here and clicking on this button. And I'll need to unlock the background layer, because I need to change that stacking mode here. You'll see why in a second. And the easiest way of doing this is holding down Alt and double-clicking on the background layer. That turns it into a regular layer. Otherwise, I couldn't move this up and down like this. And I'm going to click on this bottom layer, and I'll call this one Displace. Actually, I'll call this the Displacement Map. And I'll fill this layer with black, because remember it only works with blacks and whites. So I'll fill it with black, which I can do by holding down Alt and Backspace, because that's my foreground color. I could go to Fill with Black. Then I'm going to reduce the opacity of this upper, le uh, upper layer. Now this is a weird technique. Uh, it's a little bit uh, you know, tedious, but the result will look quite amazing. Take my word for it. I'll bring the opacity of this layer down. I can see through this layer. And you may be thinking, why are you doing that? Because I'll be actually working on this layer. I'll be creating a displacement map on this layer. I'll get a smaller brush. Now remember, I said the brighter it is, the further away it goes. The darker it is, the further away to the other side it goes. So I'll leave the background here as black. I'll try and paint the outline of this horse with white. The bits that are closer, uh, closer to me should be brighter. The bits that are farther, further away from me should be darker. So for that, a pen like this helps greatly at a graphic tablet. I'll just do this really quickly and simply using a brush, a soft brush. And I'll change the opacity of this brush to maybe say 35 or something to start with. Now, I'm just going to click here, Oops. make sure that my brush is white, so I'll hold down X or click on this arrow here, it swaps the colors. Just click and start drawing. Now I'll do the same for here, and as I'm doing this, as the bits of the horse come closer to the camera, I'll apply more pressure to the pan so that those areas will get brighter. I'll just do this base layer first. I'll come, I'll do it with the outside in a second. Now, as the nose is kind of tipping towards the camera a little bit, as I'm going to go down here, I'm going to hold down, I'm going to press even more, and you'll see it gets brighter. Let's go around and release the pressure a little bit so it gets darker a little bit as well. Do the same again. And again. Now we created the base layer uh, for well, the base drawing painting for this displacement map. I'll do this a couple more times to make the nose a little bit whiter. To check what you are doing, you can just turn this layer on and off. So I'll make this nose area a little bit whiter just by going over it. I'll get a smaller brush. Do the same for the ears. The tip, tip of the ears should be brighter because they poke out a little bit. If you've never seen anything like this before, this may just look like you know old gibberish to you, but bear with me. Now I have the basic outline here. So the front bit is brighter than the back part. And I'll go ahead and work on this now. I'll just turn off my uh, upper layer. Spread and make this area even brighter. And slowly I'll just go around. Okay. I won't spend too much more time on this. What I'll do next is I'll take this Photoshop file into After Effects and show you what it does in After Effects. So I'll go to File, I'll save this as a Photoshop file. Actually, let's go ahead and clean this up a little bit. And there uh, is. I'll just zoom in here and just clean this up a little bit so it doesn't affect the background as much. So I'll just paint it with black now to get rid of these areas. Get a 100% opacity brush. Just painting it with black. 
and these parts as well. I'm just trying to get as close um, to that shape as possible. Okay, now I can zoom out and I can go to File, Save As, or Command Shift S. Then I'll say this as Happy is displaced. Make sure that I have the layers and hit Save. Now I'll switch back to uh, After Effects. I'm done with Photoshop now. In fact, I can get rid of Photoshop and shoot After Effects. It may take a little while. I just say there's a Photoshop file with the layers. Yep. Like I said, this is probably not something that you would do every day, but uh, if you were ever asked to animate a photograph, um, if you know how to use After Effects, this is the way to go. Of course, there is a limit to this. You can't you can't take that horse and make it, you know, wink at us flat. You can, but not realistically anyway. So inside After Effects, for those who are not familiar, it looks a little bit like Photoshop. You can say After Effects is like Photoshop for moving images. Or Photoshop for motion graphics. I'll import that Photoshop file here. Again, I can double click inside this project panel, inside After Effects. It'll bring up the import dialog box. I'll go ahead and find that Photoshop file, which was Happy Ears Displaced. And I want to bring this in as a composition rather than a footage. The difference between this is if I choose footage, it flattens all those layers down and just gives me one layer. But I want to have the control over those separate layers. So I'll bring it in as composi composition. And I'll hit open. Just confirm it here. Then I have a composition here in After Effects. Double click to open that up. Could have done a bit better job here with this uh, painting, but hey. Now I have those two layers here, one the background layer, layer 0, and I have the displacement map layer here. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and turn off this displacement, la uh, displacement map layer by clicking on this eye switch. Of course it looks too dark now, because remember we dropped down the opacity of this layer in Photoshop. Maybe when we brought it over to After Effects, it keeps that opacity. So to bring that back up, you can click on the layer, hit T, that will reveal the opacity of this layer. And you can just drag this up to 100%. So this is what that uh, layer looks like in the first place. Now the reason why I'm turning this displacement map off is because I don't need to see it. I just need that brightness information from that layer. I'll just turn it off. It doesn't matter. You can leave it on. It will still work. I'll go to effects and presets to the right. And I'll just type in this place. And you'll see the displacement map here. So it's a distortion. So we'll be distorting this uh, image. We'll be distorting these pixels. And like I said, there, there is a limit to this, but it'll look good. I'm going to make sure that layer 0 is selected, and double click on this effect to apply it there. You may see a slight shift on the horse's face, on its features, but nothing major yet. I'll go up to my effect controls in After Effects, and choose Displacement Map Layer, and choose the Displacement Map here. This is why we created that uh, black and white layer. Now, this is when it starts getting interesting. After I have this um, effect applied here, this is what After Effects let me do. Like I said, there's a limit to it, but if I do it really subtly, this is what it looks like. Yes, you can repeat it. You can do it horizontally. Oh, as in, what, can, I, can I explain it again? Oh, okay. So I got rid of, I just had this layer like this to start with. Just brought it in from Photoshop to After Effects. Hit the displacement map layer. Make sure that this was showing up 100%. Go to and then went to effects and presets. Found displacement map effect. Double click to apply this effect to that to that layer. Then we went to displacement map layer and we chose the layer that we created. Displacement map. Then we use the maximum horizontal displacement. And moving it left and right, we'll move that horse left and right. If I use the vertical displacement, doing that. The more time you spend on creating that displacement layer in Photoshop, the better this will look. And of course, like I said, there's a limit to it. So if I was to push this too far, this is what they would look like. It will start displacing everything like this. So you start mounting that horse. That's not what we want. We just want to do this, do this really subtly. This is how they um, animate those photos. I mean, there are different ways of doing this as well. You can you know, cut that photograph out and put it in a separate layer and maybe just scale that photograph and it will look like the background stays the same and the photograph is just come, kind of coming towards us. Um, but they will, they, 
all of that will look really uh, robotic, if you like. So it will just look like something's growing now. It wouldn't. But this one, if you do it really subtly, you can just get away with, you know, telling that this was a shell. Of course, maybe maybe not with a horse. A horse wouldn't stand still like this. But if I had a person, for example, if I had a portrait, I can apply exactly the same thing that I did here. Use the this Facebook map there and just make them look from here to here ever so slightly. Of course, you can't do this because that information doesn't exist unless you take it into a 3D uh, application. But otherwise, you can uh, displace the image like so. Of course, you can create an animation here in After Effects. So I can start maybe from here. I can put a keyframe, go to the very end, then go ahead and displace this to the right. And then I can have this I can have this doing that. Now, of course, if it was a longer uh, sequence, let's actually make that a longer sequence. I'll just hold down Command K to get to my composition settings, and maybe make it say two seconds. And hit U to review those keyframes on this layer. And zoom out and extend these two layers to the right, and click on the second keyframe and drag it to the right. So you may be thinking, well, all that work to create this, and the answer is yes, all that work to create this. It's not easy, it, it's uh, laborious, but if you ever, if you were ever asked to you know, animate a photograph, and if you, they said that it should be you know, looking organic rather than just you know, panning around the photograph like this, then that's the way to go. And I think I'll wrap it up there. If you have any questions, fire away. If not, thanks for listening. Thank you. Any questions?